definitely could have just taken this motor, plopped it in the Samurai, and went on to the next task, but it's, it's out of the vehicle. It's really hard not to pull it apart and make sure that everything is completely functional before it moves on to the next stage of its life. And later on in the video, we're gonna discover together exactly why it's important to investigate your parts and thoroughly vet them before you install them in a new rig. These Samurai parts are always so cute. Every time I play with Samurai stuff, it just reminds me, oh, that's right, it's, it's a big toy. <laughs> this is the TJ clutch, also not a huge clutch, but clearly much bigger and is gonna have a much better clamping force than our Samurai clutch. Unfortunately, I do have a brand new Center Force Samurai clutch that I'm gonna have to send back but at least we've got a very low miles clutch from Center Force that I had on the TJ before. So now, I've got the old BRM TDI sitting here that's from the TJ. Um, if you might remember last year I went through the head, we lapped the valves, it's got a stage two camshaft and head studs. And so what the plan is today is there's a ton of really good low miles parts on this engine still that we are now going to put onto the Samurai TDI because Many of you might remember, we've got a high, high, high horsepower TDI that we're gonna build to put in this uh, later on this year. But for now, we've got this engine full of parts that we're not gonna use. So between these two engines, we're gonna make one really great, dependable uh, setup, and then we'll figure out what turbo I wanna go with, and we'll probably throw some like 300 horse injectors or something in there too. This engine started its life in a 2006 Volkswagen Jetta, and it was just your run-of-the-mill commuter car. This actually belonged to Ian Johnson's son. And Ian Johnson from Big Tire Garage decided that whenever his son got rear-ended, they didn't want to just scrap the whole car. They pulled the motor, they dropped it into in front of the transmission for the Samurai, and the long-term goal was to upgrade the turbo diesel that was in it with a modern TDI. And even though this has a history of being a completely functional engine and came out of a running driving car, I still think that it's a good idea to pull it apart and make sure that everything's good to go. I could not have picked a better motor to hop up on my soapbox and lecture you about how important it is to pull the head and inspect the engine before you put it in any swap. And that goes for LSs, TDIs, heck, even like you know an old Honda, whatever it is that you're trying to swap into your vehicle, it is worth pulling the head and inspecting everything just to see how it was treated, to take a good look at its life because we discovered a roached camshaft, and I have no doubt at all that this Jetta was still running and driving fine. Um, it was, this was Ian's son's commuter car, and it got rear-ended, and then they just pulled the motor, dropped in the Sammy, thinking everything was good to go. But if you don't pull the head, you don't know that these cam lobes are like <laughs> horrible. And you know, of course, it's making the lifters just absolutely roached as well. These lifters are horrific. The good news is, that's not that big of a deal. And you know what's even funnier about that? When I dropped the oil out of that engine, it was way too thick. I was like, I have a feeling this has got the wrong oil in it. And modern engines are so, so, so sensitive to not having the right spec of oil. So in any case, I inspected the rest of this head. Everything looks perfect. So I like to just kind of like wipe some of the crap from between these valves and get a really good look to make sure there's no cracks. And I don't see anything visible at all Everything looks really good. And then I'll look at like the head gasket surface and just get a really good idea of like, did this thing ever, you know, start to like leak compression into any of these other little spots? And I don't see anything like that. Everything looks really, really good. So the future for this head is I'm gonna find a local head shop. In fact, if you're in the Tacoma area and you know of a really good head shop that has a flow bench that does like port and polishing and stuff, please let me know in the comments. I'd like to find somebody locally um, specifically someone who has a little bit of experience with the Volkswagen heads. And so what they'll do is they will bore out a bunch of these ports for the intake and exhaust. And then I've got a stage three camshaft that we're gonna drop in this bad boy. And I've heard that with the stage three camshaft, some clearancing needs to be done in order for that to, to fit. So anyway, this is gonna be the high horsepower head that's gonna go in our TJ once, once we have somebody go through it. But we don't need all that work done for our TDI swapped Samurai. I've got a perfectly good head that we've already went through. If you remember earlier this year, I made a video on this, and if you're interested in that, I will link that in the description below. This is a stage two camshaft. We've got hardened lifters, and we even have head studs. And before we move on, 
I should probably explain what a head stud is. This is a head bolt. This is like a one-time use bolt that's from Volkswagen. They're stretch bolts, so once you use it, it's good to go until you pull it out, then it's bad forever. With a head stud, if you ever have to take the head back off, you can just reuse this, which is great. Plus, because it's a stud instead of a bolt, when you're tightening it, you're not physically like threading into your block. So because this is already threaded into the block, when you're tightening it, you're tightening the nut onto the top of this, which is essentially a stud, and it makes it to where you can apply more clamping force with less risk of ripping threads out. And because of that, you can use a higher grade material and it allows you to apply more clamping force by actually tightening the nut to a tighter spec than you would get out of the factory head bolt. And in theory, so this will make it to where you can run more boost without any issues. And in theory, you could even run higher temps if you accidentally get things really, really hot. And it, it could theoretically help keep the head from warping and whatnot. So huge upgrade all in all. So now what I need to do is clean up the block, get everything prepped and mount this head and we can start moving on to the next step. be so foolish not to pull the bottom end at this point. I mean, we know that there was a cam issue and we've got it on an engine stand. So let's pull the oil pan. I want to first inspect the pickup tube and I see no debris or anything in the screen. So that looks good. And even the pan itself is not varnished at all. They weren't using cheap oil. Whatever oil Ian Sun was using was absolutely high quality. I just don't think that it met the Volkswagen 505 spec. And that's pure speculation on my part. But Either way, it was definitely quality because I don't see any varnish on any of these parts, which is a really good indicator that it was a high quality synthetic with a ton of detergent in it. Many of you that have been watching me for a while know that I'm a huge fan of ID Parts and I have been buying stuff from them since way before I ever had a YouTube channel. They supplied all the gaskets and stretch bolts for this video and I am telling you, you can save a ton of money if you get all your gaskets, your stretch bolts, your timing belt sets, all that stuff from ID Parts instead of going to the dealer. I'm turning the motor over to check for a couple different things. So first off, I want to look for binding. And I've, so I've got all the, the glow plugs out, so it's really easy for air to like escape and whatnot, because that gives me the ability to feel any sort of a bind really easily, because it should turn over super easy like it is right now. Whereas if we had those glow plugs in, we'd be having to build like full compression and it would be hard to turn. So it's gonna be harder to tell if there's an issue. But right now, everything's spinning exactly, like nice and free, exactly like it should be. So that's a good start. If the engine was out of time and the piston was coming up and contacting a valve, we would be able to feel it right now. And that would be an indicator that we gotta pull something apart or you know, you just make sure that our, our timing is all good to go and that we didn't make any mistakes. 
Also, a long, long time ago, I got the wrong bearings and I assembled a whole Jeep 4.0 and I had the wrong crank bearings in it. And <laughs> so I start, I go to turn it and the thing was locked up. And so just by doing a simple test like this, you can get ahead of a problem like that. So this looks like it's all good to go. I also like to inspect everything and make sure that we've got some oil. And yeah, it's actually, it's drying out just from me turning the motor over. So <clears throat> a thick oil like this, a thick oil supplement, is to me goes a long way because you can just kind of like assemble everything with it. It hangs, it's really thick. And then whenever we go to turn this motor for the first time, it's gonna help protect these parts over those first few seconds while that oil pump is like, you know, really starting to gain and like, like suck oil through everything for the first time, especially since it's gonna be at like 800 RPM instead of whatever RPM this is. So this is just a little bit of extra protection for the next step of the motor. Speed of the next step, we need to choose a turbo. I've got a couple options. Let's run through them real quick. The engine that we're building and the engine that was in our TDI Swap TJ are BRM engine coats. So these are out of a 2006 Volkswagen Jetta. And the turbo that came with the Samurai happens to be the exact same upgraded turbo that I was running on this. This turbo um, it's funny, I always thought it was good for 180 horse. It's actually only good for about 160. I just, I just went and looked it up. So the factory turbo is good for about 140. This is a small upgrade. It's good for about 160. And this is a BHW. This is out of a 2005 Volkswagen Passat. And this turbo is good for 180. So it's another 20 horse over that. So there's a bunch of reasons that I wanna use this turbo. It sucks that it's used and all, but Everything feels nice and tight. I have no reason to believe that this is gonna be a problem um, in the near future. So we're gonna clean this up because if you look, the way it's positioned in the engine bay is way better. So let's look at this flat. Look at how high and how close to the back, uh, like where the firewall is that this turbo is positioned. Whereas if you look at the BHW turbo, this is way more centralized. It's gonna be way easier to pipe exhaust down intake boom right there in the front we can actually clock this so that our charge pipe you know comes in from a direction that we want it to anyway the downfall is look at the intake manifold the intake manifold is jammed into the firewall so it presents a similar problem however if we combine the turbo from the bhw which is a power upgrade and upgrade in space like like pl uh, plumbing and we combine that with the brm intake manifold we are gonna have the easiest combination to pipe, plus the BRM intake manifold is actually the highest flowing intake manifold that was sold in America. So I think that that's gonna give us the combination of parts and pieces that we want. It's gonna give us the power that we want, plus it's gonna make it a lot easier for us to pipe in the future. I promised you that this year I was gonna make way bigger progress on the projects that we do here in the shop. And that starts with bringing in help. So today is day number one of help. Ryan's coming in to help me assemble a bunch of parts and pieces that I got from Harbor Freight. And this is gonna make it to where when people come and visit in the future, they're gonna have their own toolbox. So we're not all trying to share the same tools because I've got a whole bunch of people lined up to come and help me throughout the next few months and make sure that we can get this Samurai to Easter Jeep Safari. I haven't quite figured out how I'm going to connect the oil supply to the turbo. So right now I'm just cannibalizing two stainless steel lines. 
I might use a soft piece of hose in between or I don't know if somebody out there who's watching this knows of a great place to get like some stainless braided lines or something like that let me know in the comments because that might be the easiest solution but for now I'm just kind of cobbling some things together as I decide how I want to proceed with this. Mr. Ryan, thank you so much for all the help. Ryan's gotta take off. Um, I still have more work out here. But Ryan came over and helped me assemble this because like <laughs> these are the small things that take like three or four hours unboxing and assembling tool stuff that takes away from me making content. So Ryan assembled all this and now when I have people like Ryan come over to help me, um, he's, they're gonna have their own tool set up from Harbor Freight. So it's gonna be way easier for us to not fight over the 14 mil. So anyway, I know you gotta go. Thank you, Anytime, seriously, thank you so much. Anytime. And now we are gonna figure out which adapter plate we should use on this motor. Well, plans keep changing. This was gonna go in the high horsepower TDI build, but Matt from Whitbread Performance designed it too well. <laughs> so this is clockable. This is a two piece adapter plate. The adapter for the Cody built, um, the Cody built setup is not clockable. And with the Samurai, having it clockable is going to be a huge benefit. Because you remember, the very first episode, you saw the engine coming very, very close to that front axle. That diff wants to hit the oil pan bad. So we're going to push that front axle forward to meet our needs with the suck down winch. I'm thinking we use this to clock the engine to where it swings the oil pan away from that front diff a little bit. And then we're going to move the engine up in the engine bay just a little bit. As much as we can. Um, so... <laughs> This, is, this was originally going to be for the high horsepower TDI, but this obviously is the ticket for our, our current setup. So unfortunately, I've got to go in and edit this whole video before tomorrow morning when this goes live. And while you guys are watching that, I will be back out here in the shop continuing on the next video. So I hope that you enjoyed this one. Thank you so much to ID Parts. I highly, highly recommend ID Parts. They've been amazing for like the last 10 years or whatever that I've been using them or eight years. And Whitbread Performance, I mean, Matt just does such amazing work and he's so knowledgeable. So make sure if you need anything like this, any TDI performance parts, like just head over, support the people that support us. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you on the next one.